Hello, my name is Harley Morris, and today I'm going to be presenting a TED Talk to you. In this TED Talk, I'm going to be presenting a research question. How does using ChatGPT compare to traditional methods like search engines and databases when it comes to finding and understanding information for research purposes? AI technologies represent a new access to information and gives us new insight into informational analysis. Understanding the efficiency of AI research compared to traditional methods is important for understanding the impact that AI has on all research methods. My specific question helps develop the idea that efficiency pertains to the speed and ease of finding information, while effectiveness refers to the accuracy and relevance of the retrieved information. This question looks at how well ChatGBT works for different subjects in school. It's important because it helps us understand if ChatGBT can be useful for lots of different kinds of research. People who study different things can learn about the best ways to do research using ChatGBT compared to other methods. The, research, the results of this research can help teachers, researchers, and people who work with information understand what ChatGBT is good for and what it might not be as helpful when researching. This information can help them decide when and how to use ChatGBT in their work. Since ChatGBT is a new tool, there might not be much on research on how well it works for academic stuff. By studying this, we can learn more about artificial intelligence like ChatGPT, and that can help with research. Traditionally, when considering a research question, I would explore many different sources from the UK library that's provided at my college. This would provide me more insight into my research. I often only use articles so that I can ensure the relevance of the information that I'm viewing rather than reading a whole book that doesn't have much relevance to the topic and just wasting my time. Using a library database was effective when conducting research for this question. Although I can't understand why researchers could consider this method as time consuming due to the hundreds of thousands of results that the library databases offer. In order to get the most accurate information, you must scroll through a variety of different articles and compare the results from each other. This method could be improved if the databases could provide more specific articles that would tailor to the exact research question. One of the sources that ChatGPT provided for the research question was by Christopher D. Manning. He was the main author and he is qualified to write on the subject because he is a professor in linguistics and computer science at Stanford. Manning was an early leader in applying deep learning to natural language processing. With well-known research on the GloVe model of word vectors, attention, machine translation, question answering, self-supervised model pre-training, neutral networks, machine reasoning, dependency pairing, sentiment analysis, and summarization. The purpose of this article is to explain how information retrieval can be compared using different methods of research. The audience of the book is students and readers who have an interest in the research field of study. The book is supported by facts and evidence. It also gets viewpoints from different authors of the book. The information was published in 2008. This gives relevant insight because the creation of the book is supported by evidence of previous research that the authors conducted. It has been reviewed and similar information can be found in many other sources. The information in the book is strongly connected to my topic because it provides guidelines for how information and research should be conducted. Using ChatGPT for researches has advantages and disadvantages. On the plus side, ChatGPT lets you ask questions naturally and it understands context. This can help you understand complex topics better. It has access to a wide range of information sources and it's easy to use from different devices, making it very mobile. However, it's not always accurate and relies on old information sometimes. Also, you can't see how it decides on answers and it might have biases from its training data, aka the creators of the specific AI technology. It's not good at understanding structured data like databases, so it wouldn't be good in comparison to traditional models. To use ChatGPT effectively, you need to check its answers carefully and use other research methods too, meaning that it shouldn't be relied on as your main source of information. So bias affects both traditional research methods and ChatGPT in different ways. In traditional research, bias can happen when researchers pick sources that fit their ideas 
or when certain studies get published. There can also be biases because of cultural reasons, as we learned in the week six discussion of fake news. With ChatGPT, biases can come from the data it learns from, the algorithm it uses, or even the questions people ask it. To handle biases, it's important for researchers to use diverse sources, questions, information carefully, and push for fairness and transparency in both traditional and AI-based research. By doing this, researchers can make sure they're getting the most accurate and inclusive information possible. Thank you for listening today, and I hope you have a better comparison between using traditional research methods and AI. Thank you.